Hello and welcome to An Old Man Watches and today I am going to be talking about the Gonzo 2009 Action Fest The Tournament uh, and the premise of this film is that there's a competition which is held every seven years 30 assassins in a there can be only one showdown with 10 million dollars on the line uh, each of the 30 participants is implanted with a electronic tracker so that those people running the tournament and those betting on the outcome can see where all the competitors are and follow them via closed circuit television uh, the trackers also allow the killers to find one another oh and if the game ends without a winner all the trackers explode and kill the remaining players there's a 24-hour deadline this year however a smarter than average assassin cuts out his tracker and drops it into a pot of coffee uh, which an unfortunate priest then happens to drink uh, said priest suddenly finds himself being hunted by dozens of trained killers uh, I think if he hadn't already been questioning his faith, he probably would be after that. Fortunately for him, the first assassin to find him is going through her own crisis of conscience. She recognises an innocent man, and she sets out to protect him through the course of the competition. But of course, the tournament now sees him as a participant, and there can be only one winner. So how will this resolve? Well, watch the movie to find out, basically. So this is an independent British film. It's made in 2007, uh, but the production suffered numerous problems, including running out of money, not just once, but twice. Uh, it then struggled to secure a distributor, which is why it did not receive release until two years after filming completed in 2009. And despite all the difficulties, I found the film to be an engaging one. It's certainly far from a sophisticated piece of cinema, but not every film needs to be, or to aspire to be, high art. Uh, it's more than enough that some of them aim to just be a good time, and I thought the tournament succeeded in that goal. So let's talk about why. So first of all, let's go back to 1924, when Richard Connell released a short story titled The Most Dangerous Game. In this story, a hunter finds himself the prey. He's trapped on an island and hunted by a, a mad aristocrat. Um, the story has had many many adaptations and reconceptions over the near hundred years since it uh, came out uh, including over a dozen films of varying quality uh, i personally have a soft spot for a couple of the more notoriously silly versions in the form of uh, turkey shoot and the running man uh, now the tournament is not a direct adaptation of connell's story but its premise of a man on the run from a host of violent killers is not exactly a longbow to draw from man being hunted by crazy aristocrat um, so what we have here is a nearly hundred year old story that has clearly resonated with many filmmakers and audiences since it was released another case of this would be pride and prejudice um, it's like that book it's just one of those stories that we gravitate to again and again austin's famous novel has also had many adaptations um, i own several of them uh, and there's an entire cottage industry of what they call pride and prejudice variations which are books and novellas and short stories that rewrite the tale of elizabeth bennett and uh, fitzwilliam darcy by changing some element or adding a new factor to the story <clears throat> and much like that this movie feels immediately familiar and then just adds just enough that it is that is new to have its own identity as a story it's not about to astonish you with its innovative plot or its dazzlingly witty script, but it kind of fits the bill as cinematic comfort food. And I think that's what it's trying to be. Now, all that said, let's be very clear. The film is really silly. Uh, I mean, to start with, the whole premise of the tournament is obviously a bit unsound. $10 million doesn't sound like enough money for a job with, at best, a 3% survival rate. And I'm dubious about the sustainability of killing off 29 of the top 30 assassins in the world every seven years. But equally, frankly, those are by far the, silly, the least, you know, they're far from the silliest details of this movie. This is not a movie to watch with any kind of eye on what is plausible or sensible um, the action scenes start at over the top and just keep turning up the volume from there. But with all that said, um, I've been watching the Amazon series The Wilds recently, which is frankly also a show that is not big on worrying over much about whether things are really all that plausible. Um, there was literally a moment where my, my wife said to me, I think they'll do X plot twist. And my reply was, that makes no sense. I think they will too. And they did. And it did indeed make no sense. But it still somehow worked because the wilds is not selling itself on its deep commitment to meticulously crafted plot it's selling itself on a strong initial hook lots of big drama 
and a compelling cast of characters. I think that last one is the most important thing. The show gives you people to care about, and it gets you to care about them before it really begins to unveil its nuttier plot elements. Similarly, the tournament, for all that it's very much a turn your brain off, enjoy the thrill ride kind of film, also works to give you people to care about. We have the priest, obviously, and the assassin who has chosen to defend him, and even you know one of the other competitors, all of whom are effectively established as people who we like enough to care about their fate. And in the interest of full disclosure, I will say that I think one of the key reasons I cared about the characters was the quality of the cast. Despite being an ind independent production with significant budget challenges, the tournament secured some talented actors. It's got Robert Carlyle as the priest, Kelly Hugh as the um, assassin defending him, and Ving Rhames also appears in a major role. Uh, the first two of those names, you know, those, those people always deliver good work, at least in my experience. Uh, Rames is not always quite so reliable. Uh, he made no apparent effort to salvage the uh, execrable 2008 version of Day of the Dead, for instance, but then I doubt anybody could. Um, but, you know, on his day, he's certainly more than capable of good work, and while the tournament is not a film that requires him to really stretch himself in the kind of role he's asked to play, it's also a film that gives him a role for which he's very well suited, and he does a fine job. So that's the tournament. It's an hour and a half of ridiculous action spectacle. There's not a lot you haven't seen before, and there's definitely some elements you will have seen before, unless you've been livering under some kind of movie-free rock for your whole life. But it does a decent job of being the kind of high-octane action film it sets out to be, and I don't regret the time I spent watching it. Next time, given that I've said nice things about two movies in a row, I think it's time to talk about one that really, really doesn't work. So let's look at 1974's The Ghost Galleon, aka The Blind Dead 3, Ship of Zombies and Horror of the Zombies. I actually saw it under the last of those titles, but trust me, it's every bit as bad. Every bit as bad, whatever they call it. But that's next time. Until then, thanks for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed it.